Hello, my name is Wendy Manzo and I'm a prophetic artist and today I'm speaking with Natasha Castellan. I've known Natasha for about six years now. She came to a workshop with me in Sydney and has since done five workshops with me and she's completed in that time a Bachelor of Fine Art and Visual Culture. So the subject that I wanted to talk to Natasha about today is perseverance. Mm. So thank you for being with me, Natasha. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be able to share with you, Wendy. Awesome. Awesome. I know because I've known you personally for that time and we work together at the mm. Creative Hearts Art Gallery, I know what it's taken for you to do what you do. And I've seen you intentionally pursue your art career. So I'd love you to give us some insight. What does perseverance mean for you? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, it's actually a hard one to articulate in a way because perseverance uh, is having a goal, mm -hmm. having something set and not caring how long it takes to get to your end result and having things get mucked up along the way. So as you said, uh, 2014, I actually started my uh, degree just before I did my first workshop with you, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I did it part-time. I did it part-time because I have four children, four daughters, beautiful girls. I was working full-time at the local high school. But I wanted to do something intentional for my career, but something that was a little bit, oh, um, in the closet. <laughs> As you and Andy know, I was a little bit of a closet artist, something that was a little bit in the closet, but I could still keep um, working away and building on my craft. Actually, that's an important point because I do remember it taking a while for you to declare that you're an artist. Yeah. So, so that's an, that is an interesting uh, journey for you. So can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah. So, like, I, I come from a... a my mum's creative, my father was an artist as well, and um, doing art and being creative was actually second nature, and I was always doing some workshop or another. Mm -hmm. um, when I moved to the Gold Coast, I did join the Gold Coast Art School, and from there I knew I wanted to build on my art practices. But I kind of, for some reason, was in the closet about this, and wasn't that keen for everyone to know what I was working towards. Mm. I can't even explain why. Okay. I don't know what the reason behind it was. There was kind of a, a bit of a, a fear of a fear of failure, but also a fear of success, which is really weird. <laughs> That's but, interesting, isn't it? Mm, Did that yeah. add to your perseverance or did that hinder you? Good question. Did that add to my perseverance? I still kept pursuing it mm. and I felt that if uh, I did my degree, then when I was finished, I would have a skill set behind me. But what instead? I can't, I'm not going to uh, put down having a degree because I believe having the degree was great. I learned a lot. Just before we came on, Wendy said, oh, what's visual culture? Visual culture is art history. I learned a lot about art history. I learned a lot about other artists and what it took for them to become successful. Mm. So mm. doing the degree was great, but I didn't learn that many skills in there. But what I did learn is to have a bit of a confidence in me and learning from other artists and how they did things, even modern artists, not just, you know, the old, you know, Renoir or Van Gogh or any of them, even modern artists modern mm. Australian artists and what it took to, for them to be who they are and seeing that there's all kinds of different artists out there. Yes, I, that's one thing I've noticed about you. You're so curious. You want yeah. to know what somebody's working on and what it looks like and, it's, it, and you are like viva la difference. <laughs> um, yeah, in those six years that it took me to complete my degree and I didn't actually tell you 
but it finally came in the mail today. What a funny day to be talking about it. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I congratulations. Haven't <laughs> I haven't even told my family yet that it came today. Well, the world um, knows now. <laughs> yeah, the world knows. But um, going back to it, it took time and sometimes I had to take a break and other times I had to double my load to get it. And then right at the end, I knew I just couldn't stay where I was. I, I liked my job. I was good at my job. I liked the people I was working with. But it wasn't what God had called me to do. Mm. And even the principal of the school said, you know, you, you're here in body but not in spirit anymore. And I said, no, I'm not. And so I took some time off right at the end to complete it and to actually step out, open the closet door and step out and, yeah, it took a long time. Perseverance, yes. Learning all the way. I think one of the big things is you never make it. You're always learning. Mm. You're, we're always on a journey. So I think it's not like oh, I've made it now. I've got my degree or I've, I've got a job now at, at a reputable art school or I've got a gallery that I've opened with Wendy. Wow, I've made it now. I don't think like that at all. I think we're just on a journey and the perseverance can't stop now. In fact, I feel like I have to work harder now and be even more persevered. Yes, yeah, like everything was leading up to being on the starting block and now yeah. it's go. Yeah, so imagine you're, you're on a race and you're just doing a warm-ups at the beginning. Those six years were warm-ups. <laughs> yeah, so I think that, yeah, uh, that's important because um, being an artist and pursuing an art career is not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's a marathon, yeah. 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 Now, you've met some interesting people along the way. How much has talking to other artists about how they work um, influenced you and helped you stay on track? It's just shown me how much you have to just keep being in your studio, how important it is to constantly be working on your body of work, your craft, your art, your skill base, and how to really genuinely be successful. Mm. You just have to keep going and non-stop. And it's a hard, it's hard. It's not easy. Mm. But mm -hmm. when you're doing what you're passionate about and when you're doing what you're called, then it's not, it's not like a weight of the world is on your shoulders while you're doing it. It's something that you, there's a passion in it. And I think that makes a di big difference. So, you know, I finished a body of work. I'm passionate about it. I'm excited to now be promoting it. I'm excited to look to how to get prints from it. I'm excited about exhibiting it. And, you know, that part of the journey as an artist is just as important as what it took me to create the works. Yeah, yeah. Um, looking back, was there a time where you lost your passion? Uh, I don't think there was a time when I lost my passion, but there was a time where I didn't know the direction within my art. And I think a lot of artists feel like uh, how, you know, they haven't found their style or mm. their theme that they want to be working towards or their voice or their the way they, the medium they use or the way they apply paint. So for a while there, I just tried everything and I went to lots of workshops and I've got paintings from works I did in workshops that I actually don't, haven't transferred that to what I do because it's not, it's not who I am, but I was just seeking left, right and centre for a while who I am as an artist and looking mm. for it everywhere. It's interesting, isn't it, that you cannot speed that process up. No. You were an emerging artist for five years and it doesn't matter mm. how often you paint and how much you pursue it, you can't make it go any faster. Style okay. takes time to develop. No, it takes time to develop. And often you see young artists, and when I say young, I mean, you know, people who's not long mm. been in, you know, six to 12 months and they're like, no, why isn't it selling? Why am I not finding my style? Why is this? Why is that? Well, you haven't done the time. <laughs> yeah. You haven't done the time. Yeah, they You've say 10,000 hours. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. And I'm not sure that I've quite reached those hours yet. I think I'm still discovering myself. And hopefully we're all still evolving and learning new things. And Yeah, and it's the maintaining that childlikeness of, mm. um, I think curiosity is the best word I can think of. It's like, what will this brush do? What will that colour do? What if I mix these two bits together? It's yeah. like the constant yeah. experimenting. Don't don't be afraid to experiment. Yeah. Mm. And today we have technology. Even uh, last night I was at the art school and there was a lady who used a program on her phone. It sounds like Picasso, but I don't think it's something like that. And she puts the photo in that she's taken herself and it turns it into an abstract and then she uses that as the basis for her paintings oh my gosh her paintings were beautiful oh so you know in this day and age there's so much um technology we can even use to assist us in finding what we want finding something that's unique in our own so natasha you had four children uh, mm. i imagine time was scarce for you oh, yes. how how did you manage that it was a real challenge, but it was something um, you were saying, uh, perseverance. I was determined to do it. I have four daughters and I spend a lot of time with my kids and I'm a hands-on mum. So, you mm -hmm. know, I was president of the PNC. My children did music lessons, so I would take them to them. And three of my girls were part of the Gold Coast Youth Orchestra and I was one of the administrators there. So there was a lot of balls that I was juggling in the air. Yeah. But in the evenings, instead of, you know, plonking down in front of the telly, I would just turn on the computer or read my readings. You just had to make the time. You know, so we often talk about being time short, but mm. the time's there. It's just how we choose to use that time. And in the evenings, from dinner time onwards, I'd be on, on the computer doing stuff. I actually was really fortunate because my girls, girls were a bit older. I, I could even get them involved in, say, my uh, proofreading my stuff. And having them around helped me bounce ideas with them. And they felt part of the degree with me. And oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. And one of my, my oldest daughter, Samantha, she did a, um, she's quite academic. She did a lot of my proofreading and she feels that she's done the, you know, that she, the, She's done a the degree in visual because, culture. Yes. Yeah, because English isn't my first language, so I have issues often with grammar and sentence structure and things like that. Mm -hmm. And she would fix all that up for me, and she, yeah, she feels all the richer for it. And and having someone or people to do the journey with you makes it easier. Having a supportive family makes it easier too. You know, having their support and then going, you can do this, mum. You can do this, hun. That made a big difference, yeah. having their love and support. Yeah, and you did have a few things um, like, you know, working not against you, but like a, things to navigate to get through. Oh, yeah. But yeah. the support of the people around you, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and even during that time, my mum was diagnosed with cancer as well. And so it was just, she's now in remission, but it's just oh, the yes. juggling act of all of that. and. Um, she didn't have anyone else. My sister's somewhere in a different town, and juggling it all was was hard. I'm not going to deny it wasn't hard, mm -hmm. but looking back now, it was also a pleasure to the things I've learnt and having the support of the family and and friends and people who are saying, "Yeah, you can do this." And it's also a uh, a great testimony to them, to my family, to my kids, to my nieces and nephews to say, hey, look, you know, here I am in my 50s and I've completed a degree. Yeah. How much was the God factor and your faith part of this journey? Oh, I think it was a vital part of my journey. Mm. Um, you know, I had to know that this is what God wanted from me. During that time, don't get me wrong, I had my doubts and I would say, God, this is so hard. Why am I doing this? Am I doing this for my own vanity or for my own building my own self up? 
and I couldn't even see how I could possibly even use art in the beginning for his glory, which is actually, Wendy, why I was doing, went and did your workshop because I wanted to see how can art be used for the glory of God. Mm. But in that time, God, you know, put his loving arms around me when it was hard and said, no, no, I have a purpose, I have a plan, and we got this together. And without that, without the support of my family, without knowing that God was doing the journey with me, I think I may not have done the journey at all. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Art is important to God. I have learned that. Yeah. And he can't paint unless you do. Yeah. We're, uh, we're yeah. his hands and we're his feet. And yeah. I have seen people in our gallery that Wendy and I uh, are in and, and run. There was a day that, I was working there and I had a painting up on the wall called Showers from Heaven. And what I had was there was like this darkness at the bottom, but from the top there was white and gold and yellow coming down. And it was the painting was about the heaviness that we experience in God's anointing coming and washing over us. And a gentleman walked in and he was looking around and he just pointed at it and said, oh, that's a spiritual painting. That painting is incredibly moving. And that was my opportunity to talk to him and share with him what that painting means to me and what God means to me and who he is. Yeah. So it's amazing how art can be used, how people can feel it before we even tell them what it's about, and then being able to use that as a platform to share Jesus Christ with others. I love that people come into our gallery that would probably never go into a church. Oh. Absolutely. And they're coming and they're being, um, yeah. having an encounters with each painting. Yeah, that yeah. I don't know how to describe that. Yeah, and I've seen people uh, come through and be really moved to tears by some of the things that they've mm. seen or read about the paintings. And, and there's something really beautiful about that. And obviously not all mm. our works are like that, you know, I, don't want people to think that you know all my works are so incredibly spiritual some of them are like my teacup behind me <laughs> that's because well, i'm just drinking cups of tea with my daughters during coronavirus isolation yeah so, i love that painting and to me it's fun and you're right it's family it means family it's, yeah. it's family so it doesn't always have to uh, be this big spiritual thing sometimes but there are paintings that do carry an anointing and you you know, you don't have to explain it. Sometimes people just stand in front of them and they, they know. They go, there's something on that painting, you know, and it's yeah. giving me goosebumps. Yeah. 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 It is a privilege to do what we do. It is a privilege. It's a privilege mm. to serve God in any capacity, whether we're serving God, cleaning up, serving God through our family, Whatever we do, it's actually, I feel that when we do it unto the Lord, it's a privilege to do. Awesome. I knew there was a reason I liked you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for talking with us today, Natasha. It was really good to have you on board. Oh, and uh, hopefully you'll come back and chat again one day. Yes, that would be wonderful. Thank you, Wendy. I love your work. I love what you're doing with the prophetic art people and building an army of God. Thank you. God bless.